Just a snapshot of one day's intensive training for a deployment to Afghanistan. From the kinetic and unexpected to the more straightforward. Members of C Company 2nd Battalion, the Royal Gurkha Rifles, board a Puma Mark II helicopter. A simple enough task, but there's a right way and consequently a wrong way to do it. This part of their Afghanistan training is teaching them the right way. Jump out, don't use the step. As a reaction force, we have to sometimes deploy you by using the heli. So this is the quite important. So our drills are, the skills are quite good and speed uh, is key in this one. So that's why we are trying to uh, speed up our drills and skills, practicing these drills. It might seem pedantic, even unnecessary to learn how to get on a helicopter. But learn now to do it right in the safety of the Kerwent training area. And doing it for real in the dangerous environment that can be Afghanistan will hopefully pass off without incident. A couple of hundred yards away, C Company's HQ for this exercise. The compound mirrors their future base in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul. Our primary role as part of the UK's contribution, long-standing contribution to Afghanistan, is to support those who are training, advising and assisting. And what that really means is those soldiers, those NATO partners who are going into the Ministry of Education, uh, Ministry of Defence, Ministry of In uh, Interior and supporting those soldiers who are training the Afghans. And that's our role. It's really a force protection role in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, the ground-based demo is put into practice. I think it's been exceptionally useful. Uh, we've been here for, I think, four days now, and uh, throughout the course of the week, uh, the tempo and the complexity of what's been thrown at us has increased. Um, Kerwent's a great training area for this sort of thing. There's buildings. Um, whilst it doesn't replicate Kabul and five million people, it's as close as really the tra training estate here can, can give us. Well, from helicopters to now road moves. In a minute, three foxhounds are going to come down here, depositing an embassy official and military personnel to a meeting with an important Afghan government figure. It sounds simple, but there's a surprise in store. While that's running, we'll give a few time, about 15, 20 minutes, before I'll set off a uh, suicide bomb attack, which is going to occur here. And we'll have a few casualties, which will include the civilians and also uh, one of the uh, um, UK embassy staff. And then from there, I'll just stand back and watch how the Gurkhas, to our Jirau, um, us come up with a plan for them to uh, deal with the situation with the casualties, civilians and also the, uh, the British embassy stuff that they'll bring. Well, the scenario is certainly proving a test to the Gurkhas. Not only do they have to deal with the casualties that have been inflicted after this suicide bomb attack, but also the colleagues of those who were injured who seem very angry about the response to the incident. And how they reacted, uh, the platoon commander was a young guy who's just come up from Sandhurst, uh, and it was really good. They took it, he took that condom moment sort of, uh, and controlled everything under pressure, which is uh, really good to see. Back at base, there's no rest. Locals harrying the Sanger guards. Part of the drip, drip, drip of major and minor incidents running continually through the week. We've seen C Company face a whole range of challenges today. They'll be based in Kabul when they go to Afghanistan. But on Forces News tomorrow, we'll be focusing on B Company to RGR. We'll be based at the Karga Officer Training Academy and we'll face a whole range of challenges, many that are very different to what we've seen here. Tim Cooper, Forces News, Carwen.